video so you can pinpoint when you're studying, you're like, I don't get example three. You can be like, I just want to go see that one on YouTube. Okay, so two terms in an arithmetic sequence are term four is minus four and term seven is 23. So what I'm going to do is first we're going to visualize this. We don't know term one, so I'm going to leave a space. We don't know term two. We don't know term three. We know that term four is minus four. We don't know term five. We don't know term six. And we know that term seven is 23. Now, there's a couple different techniques that teachers have showed for this one. I'm going to start off by um, trying to do it sort of in what makes sense, okay? In what makes sense, I, very similar to our license plates at the beginning of the lesson, do you notice that to go from here to here, we have gone up 27. We went from negative 4 to 23 you've gone up 27. If we think of it in littler jumps, we have to go up d once to here, up d twice to here, and up d three times to there. Therefore, without using any formulas whatsoever, we can make an equation using what we see on the top and what we see on the bottom. On the top, we have three Ds. On the bottom, we have 27. Using this method, is it hard to find out what D is? Divide both sides by 3, and D is equal to 9. Okay. Now, we didn't use any formulas whatsoever. Now, if you go on to YouTube or if you do some searches, you might find other people trying to teach students how to do a question like this. And a very common technique that's used in questions like this is they say, temporarily make this one, like if this didn't exist, because we don't even know it. And we said, this is our first term. Then instead of term 7, can you see this would be term 2, term 3? This would be term 4. And then they say, then you could use a formula. Then you could use your formula. And I'll do this in purple. And you'll notice one of the things that I try to do with teaching is I like to change colors. If you have different colors, sometimes you might want to do it in your notes. Having things in different colors triggers your brain to remember some stuff. It also helps you organize things when you look at it to see what's happening. So we figured out D was 9 using sort of intuitive method, but it didn't use any formulas. Okay, The intuitive method said, well, I went up 27. If I went by Ds, that would be going up 3Ds. So 3Ds has to equal 27, and D is equal to 9. Most common teaching method online would say, let's temporarily make this term 1, because then we can use our formula from our formula sheet. And this is where the formula on the formula sheet is nice, because you can't use a what works when you don't know what D is. So here's our formula from our formula sheet. What do we know? We know term 4. Term 4 is 23. So if I put in 4 for n, Term 4 would be 23. I know term 1 is minus 4. I don't know D, but if I'm using term 4, this is what would happen. 23 equals negative 4 plus D times 4 minus 1. If I do some simplifying, I could add 4 to both sides. Gives me 27. 4 minus 1 is 3, so that leaves me with 3 times D. Divide both sides by 3. And we get d is equal to 9 using a formula. 
Some people like the formula because it helps them out that way. Okay? Either way, we've now got d is equal to 9. Now, if you wanted to find term 1, method number 1, right? Here's term 1. If I want to find that and I work backwards, does it make sense if you're working forward, you add 9? If you work backwards, you would subtract 9. So doing that, we would get minus 13, then minus 22, then minus 31. And we found term 1. Okay? Some people really like formulas, especially if, can you see that this method of subtracting 9 until you get to term 1 was pretty straightforward and easy here because we knew term 4. I could give you this same question that said, this is term 396, and this is term 399. And you found out that D is 9. It no longer makes sense to subtract 9 395 times to get down to term 1. So this method works nice here because there's not a lot of numbers. But sometimes you might want to use a formula to do this. What would it look like to use the formula for this? Well, we now have our formula from our formula sheet. We don't know term 1. But this is a formula from our formula sheet. What can we do? We now have figured out that D is 9. We know that term 4 is negative 4. We also know that term 7 is 23. So you could use either one of those. If I use term 4, I could plug in negative 4 because I know that that's equal to term 4. I don't know term 1. I know that D is 9. And I know that n is 4 because I used term 4. Maybe I put that off to the side, a little reminder. Term 4 equals minus 4. So that would allow me to substitute the minus 4 in for here and a positive 4 in for there. Now, what can I do? Minus 4 equals term 1 plus 9 times 3 is 27. Subtract 27 on both sides and I get that term 1 is equal to minus 31. Okay? Be aware, in math, you should always be thinking, do I know how to find this on my own? Okay? Yes, I could just keep subtracting none. Also, would there be a way to do this with a formula in case the just subtracting 9 would take forever? Yes, be aware of both of those. Because in math, I always sort of say, okay, there's ways that work, but there's always ways that work better. And the way that works better isn't always the same as in this example. I kind of would probably just go subtract 9, subtract 9, subtract 9. It was quick enough, easy, right? But maybe this would be better in a different situation. Okay, so then above the numbers. What I'm going to write for number 3 is I'm going to get you to do 10 and 13. I'll get you to circle 10 and 13. We're tight for time. We've got about 3 minutes left, so I'm not going to do example 4 in class today. But I will give you the last 4 minutes to now go to your exercises. The ones that you circled, start on them. And have those ones done for tomorrow.